discuss why. The dose rates were less than five times the limit, which meets the criteria for a Nuclear Regulatory Commission white finding. Our goal is to report the most accurate dose readings available, not merely the highest value that can be measured. Overconservatism does not enhance public confidence. We need to be accurate. We need to use radiation measuring devices that give us accurate information. Some of the missed opportunities in this job evolution. Job planning missed key methods and HU tools. What are HU tools? Human performance improvement tools. Any ideas? Some of that could, could have been used? Dave. That's right. Stop, think, act, review. When completing the initial survey on the package before sending it down the road, these dose rates that they were getting were close to the regulatory limits. Stop, think, act. Well, if I'm close to limits, maybe I need a more accurate meter. And then review, talk it over with the supervisor. Questioning attitude, another human performance tool. Always question, am I using the most conservative equipment? Am I close to a regulatory limit? If I am this close, maybe I need a peer check. Discrete radioactive particle not detected. We discussed why. If you're moving the meter too fast and the meter is not accurate, or as accurate as it needs to be, you may miss particles. 49, Code of Federal Regulations, Subpart Hotel, Qualifications Not Verified. The packaging did not fix the particles in place. So while the initial shipping survey showed that we were within the DOT limits, the package was bouncing around inside of the box. The package needs to be fixed in place inside the shipping container. The Radways shipping coordinator did not inspect the packaging inside the box, inside the container, or he would have seen that it was not tied down properly. When you have things bouncing around in the container, that's when you lodge loose the particles that can get you in trouble later down the road, which is what happened here. Differences in content versus surface readings not questioned by the Radway Shipping Coordinator. And readings close to the Department of Transportation limit did not require additional oversight. Again, questioning attitude. We had readings that were close to the reg limits. Why didn't we get a peer check? Why didn't we ask the question, hey, should we be using more accurate meters? More causes and corrective actions at Prairie Island. Prairie Island radiation protection personnel did not apply human performance fundamentals and job planning and allowed an unacceptable level of tolerance for risk. We discussed that, but what have they done to correct it? Well now, pre-job briefs require identification of critical steps and application of human performance tools for error reduction. We discussed many of the human performance tools that could have been utilized when it was realized that these dose rates were close to the reg limits. A risk matrix was developed to guide radiation protection related activity decision making. Again, asking the question, I'm close to the limits, are the meters that I'm using accurate enough to show proper readings? Is the package tied down because if it's not, we have heightened our radiological protection risk of allowing discrete radioactive particles to jog loose inside the box. Site-wide focus on human performance improvement plans and diagnostic assessment, assessment used in supervisor coaching to address more conservative behaviors. As you can see, the majority of this is utilization of human performance tools. More corrective actions and causes. Prairie Island radiation protection personnel methods were inadequate 
to detect the presence of discrete particle contamination of materials. The procedures now require the use of radiation survey instruments that provide faster responses with an audible indication of discrete particles. All RP technicians have received training in the use of these types of instruments. The thinking here, an RP technician, a radiation protection health physics technician, needs to be looking at what he is surveying and reading the meter at the same time. It's very hard to look at two things at the same time and do it accurately, right? But what they have now is they have new survey equipment that has an audible response. So you can be looking at what you're surveying and hearing a response, like a pulse. Beep, 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 beep. The higher the radiation, the faster and louder the pulse. So, if I'm looking at my package and I'm surveying it, if I'm coming up to a discrete radioactive particle, those rates are slightly increasing, I'm hearing the pulse increase, I need to slow my meter down. Perry radiation protection methods were inadequate to successfully package radioactive materials. We talked about that. We need to tie the package down. Make sure it doesn't jog anything loose or become loose itself inside the shipping container as it's bouncing up and down the road. Prairie Island now requires contents to be tightly wrapped to prevent them from shifting in transit. They actually use a, uh, a plastic cellophane wrap that they wrap the material. That way if it does jog loose in the shipping container, the particles stay in the wrapping. Excellent thought. All RP technicians have received training in these new packaging methods. The Radway Shipping Coordinator must directly oversee the packaging of all materials for high-risk shipments. One of the causes was they packaged the material and surveyed it, and the Radway Shipping Coordinator never saw how the package was placed in the box. Was it tied down to prevent movement? All personnel involved with packaging and shipping must have 49 Code of Federal Regulations subpart hotel qualifications verified. You cannot perform a function such as this if you haven't had the right training and qualifications. That needs to be verified. High risk shipments require a closed transport trailer. Again, high risk, high dose, high contamination, Keep it in closed transport to keep anything from jogging loose and possibly spilling. As you can see, based on this event, we're now getting more conservative in our decision making for how dose rates are compared to regulatory limits, how more accurate and conservative instrumentation is used, and how more conservative our packaging of the material is. We are learning from our mistakes. More causes and corrective actions. Prairie Island management engagement in shipping radioactive materials was inadequate to say the least. RP management must own all of RP. Health physics management must own everything health physics related including shipping. Radiation protection supervision now required to approve shipments exceeding 40% of Department of Transportation limits. We are now getting supervision directly involved in RP radioactive waste shipments or radioactive material shipments as well. Packages potentially containing discrete radioactive particles require radiation protection manager approval. You cannot get any higher in management interface than that. We pull something out of the fuel pool for shipment, heightened risk of particles. We now require manager approval. Shipments exceeding 80% of the DOT, Department of Transportation limits, require plant manager approval. Not only are we getting radiation protection health physics management involved, we are now getting plant management involved. It's called vertical alignment, guys. They need to know top 
down what is shipping, what the risks are for shipping, and how it could affect not only the plant, but the safety of the public. Risk assessment. How do we determine risk? How does management now manage that risk? RP management must understand risk associated with shipments and align the program to increase oversight of these shipments. Not only Prairie Island has switched to this, every plant needs to do this. No longer is